Hey fam, welcome back. It is your girl Marshawn Olanio. I am your favorite life and relationship strategist. I am here today because I wanted to come and talk to you guys about the importance of loving yourself. Loving yourself is actually going to help you throughout the course of your life. It's going to help you throughout the course of your relationship. It's actually going to just help you all throughout your entire existence. Loving yourself is very, very, very important because number one, it is a prerequisite, I can't even speak. <laughs> loving yourself is a prerequisite to living a fulfilled life. Yes, you must love yourself in order to have a fulfilling life because if you're not loving yourself and you're actually living somebody else's life, who are you actually who are you actually living for if you're not loving and living for oneself? That means you're living for somebody else. And who could that somebody else be? Yes, I'm waiting for the answer. Who could that somebody else be if you're not living for yourself, if you're not living your own fulfilled life? Loving yourself is very important because it is a prerequisite to living a fulfilled life. Loving yourself also is the only way to influence change within your spouse and those around you. Loving yourself is the only way to influence change in your spouse and those around you. How you may ask? Because it shows up loving yourself, loving yourself shows itself in the way that you respond to people including your spouse the way you act to people including your spouse the way that you show up are you respecting yourself as well as others around you are you giving people a chance to actually speak and you don't feel like you're being neglected or you have to cut them off because of for whatever other reason other than you're not listening you must get your point of view out there influencing other people is a way to show that you love yourself again it is the only way to change your spouse and those around you see most of the time we think that in order to change our spouse in order to change our co-workers in order to change our siblings or our parents we think that they are the ones who should be changing when in fact the change has to start with you you have to be the very change that you want to see in your relationship you have to be the very change that you want to see in your all of your relationships so if you want people to be nicer to you, you be nicer. If you want people to respect you, you have to be the respectful person. If you want people to say hello to you, then you say hello. If you want people to acknowledge that you have come into the room again by saying hello or something to that manner, you do it when you go into the room. See, a lot of, a lot of us lose sight and we think that the other person is supposed to do something in order for you to do or get what you want from them. That's not the way that it works. You have to show up and be that person day in and day out. And guess what? Eventually, your partner, your spouse is going to notice and they will change themselves. They will change accordingly. They will do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. And um, I really have a personal story because me and my husband, we don't argue much. But when we do have a disagreement or something, he has a tendency to cut me off, right? And so instead of me getting pissed off or like jumping and like, why are you doing that and doing all of this stuff too? I just sit back and say, simply, babe, I was speaking. And, and we both do it to each other, but he does it so much more than me. And this is not the blame game or anything, but I'm just letting you know that whenever that happens in a respectful tone, in a respectful manner, I just let him know that's not cool. I was speaking. And so until I'm finished, give me the respect, give me the honor to let me finish what I'm saying. And then you will absolutely have the chance to do it. And guess what? Whenever I feel like I want to cut him off and pop off and do something, guess what he said? Babe, I'm speaking. So we do it to each other. We're both getting better by being in this relationship with one another. We listen to each other. So that is only helping us out. But we we both are becoming and helping the other person change by um, influencing the change in our spouse by being the change ourselves first. Another thing, you have to be fully aware of the life around you. Yes, it's going to make you fully aware of the life around you when you start to love yourself. You're going to look at the world differently. You're going to be more respectful. You're going to be more empathetic. You're going to be more sympathetic. You're going to put yourself in other people's shoes more often. And you're going to say, you know what? Maybe what they're actually going through 
is something that I can help them with or I could just simmer down myself because I never know what the other person is actually going through and because I don't know what they're going through I'm just gonna chill out you know what I don't have to go behind the other person because I got road rage because they cut me off maybe they're running out to the hospital because something happened maybe they're running late on their job and you left in ample time don't worry about excuse me don't worry about none of that stuff just let the person go right you'll be more aware of your surroundings the life around you be more full fully aware of the life around you when you love yourself right it's also going to change your viewpoint of things and people around you because again just like i mentioned just a moment ago you never know what a person is going through you never know the day that the person is having like i remember hearing a story i can't remember where i heard it from but basically this guy was on a train and he his children was basically running them up they was doing whatever they wanted to do and one of the other train riders basically looked at the looked at the guy and said i really wish you would control your children and the and the guy responded and he said you know what you're right I probably should tell them to sit down or tell them to stop but we literally just left the hospital and their mother just died and I really don't know what I'm going to do of course that changed the other train riders perspective and and you know he sat down and you know and started to do the apology thing but we never know the other person's day and what they're going through in that very moment I'm sure most of the time the children weren't running them up but their mom just died. And so you see how it changes your viewpoint. Even when you heard the story, you probably was thinking yourself, yeah, those children need to sit down. I don't know why parents let their kids do. You probably was going all alone before I even finished the story. We got to be more sympathetic, people. We do. We do. But that is in a way of loving yourself because it's going to change your viewpoint and the way you see everything everything the way you see everything is going to change it another thing that loving yourself do, does and this is the final point which it which is it's going to help you become vulnerable and show your vulnerability easier and that is important especially in any type of relationship but specifically to this i'm talking about your romantic relationship because so many of us out here are scared to be vulnerable in front of our spouse in front of our partner and then we wonder why the relationship is only superficial even though we decided to say that we're going to be in a committed relationship it never gets deep some people even go through this after they said i do to one another and then they, they, they can't get the relationship to go deep, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that you yourself have never been vulnerable. You've never opened up your world to your spouse or to your partner. You never cried in front of them. I talked to a client the other day. She told me that she had never cried in front of her husband. How do you, how do you get married and they've never seen you cry? How, how do you hold on to all of that pain and all of that emotion and, and you're just very stoic? Nothing bothers you. Of course it bothers you. Something happened in your past to help you trigger, excuse me, not trigger, that, that made you become this very stoic person that holds on to everything. When in fact you need to release just like everybody else. And soon as you have a moment where we are um, face to face, in an area where it's closed off, where you're able to be vulnerable and comfortable with me, all of that comes out. And how come it's actually easier for you to showcase that to me, a stranger, versus your spouse? The one you sleep with, the one you said I love you to, the one you said I do to. It's much easier for you to express yourself to a stranger, and sometimes to me, I understand it, but I'm going to say it here. It's a lot easier for you and other people out to, to express themselves to strangers because there is no um, attachment to that stranger. You can get all this stuff off your chest and maybe you'll never see this person again. It doesn't matter if they decide that they want to judge you later on. You're never going to hear about it because more than likely your, your paths are never going to cross again. And that's why you're able to share and showcase all of this pain and hurtful stuff with a stranger versus your spouse because there is an emotional attachment there and you are fearing how they're going to look at you and how they're going to judge you and what they're actually going to say to you. So that is why you holding on to all of that. But you have to be more vulnerable in these in your relationship. 
in order for it to go deeper, in order for you to truly know who you in the bed with. There's always going to be some learning. Yes, there's always going to be some learning to you as well as to your spouse. Always, always, always. But don't you want to have a clearer picture of the person that you're in the bed with versus only superficial stuff? And you saying that you love them, but you don't know what makes them tick. You don't know why they respond the way that they respond. You don't know why they react the way that they react. You don't know why they actually want you um, not to talk back or to make sure that you put on your, all your clothes or pull your pants up or don't drive fast. You don't know why because they've never shared or you the person has never shared any of these vulnerable situations that you have been in all of these traumas and stuff that you have experienced as a child or even as a young adult even a few days ago a few years ago so you're not opening up and letting your spouse in but once you start to do that you will absolutely be showing how much you actually love yourself how much you respect yourself and on top of that how much you actually respect the relationship and how much you respect your spouse as well this is why loving yourself is so important because you will show up and be the very person that you are meant to be and as a bonus before i go i will say that Another thing that loving yourself does and the importance of loving yourself is that it helps you take off the mask. The mask that we all wear, the mask that we try to show the world that we are Miss Perfect or Mr. Perfect, when in fact none of us are perfect. Yes, logically we know that none of us are perfect, but deep down, deep seated, we think that we are perfect which is why we have to wear the mask which is why a lot of us continue to wear the mask and that's where a lot of that superficiality comes from that's why you're so superficial that's why you run away with anytime somebody gets try, tries to get too deep with you or the relationship try, the relationship starts to get too deep all of a sudden you ghost you ghost because you get scared because you've never dealt with the, your traumas deal with your traumas if you need help reach out to me i'm here reach out to me I am totally here you can send me a Facebook message on Facebook you can send me a email at Marshawn at MarshawnOlanio.com of course I'll put that there and then you can also go to my website www.MarshawnOlanio.com those are that that is three ways to reach out to me and if you know me personally pick up the phone Let's talk about how we can work together so we can get you to where you need to be so we can take you to the next level within the next year of your relationships. Let's 